Considering how popular the gauges have been, the decorative gauges, as you can see they've got a glass front and a nice engraved plastic back. This one's the T gauge, the small version, or there's the steam head bigger gauge. And the fact, I forgot to add, that I originally intended them to actually be animated using a lenticular lens, which never came to fruition. In my continuing endeavour, or endeavours, to come up with a more affordable product, it would be nice to possibly produce a kit where people could assemble all the bits that are provided to make a working gauge. You have a motor on and when you connect a battery to it, it actually moves. Yeah, so as you can see, it's got a really low power motor turning a row of gears, a gear train, finally ending up with a needle, a pointer that can move over some sort of gauge and it's going to have a front panel as well with a window in it. This came about because I haven't got the 3D printer that I used for Florence the Autumn Martin. I thought, well, 3D printing and gears. I just thought the first experiment I did was this one. I printed out a central prong on the 3D printer and a gear, two gears fixed together with a hole and everything. And you can see it's got a little split pin and then when you put it together it worked really well. No machining, no extra complicated work, keep costs down, etc, etc which I never seem to be able to do, after many more experiments I have decided to go with a mixture of 3D printed and laser cut parts because the gears that you can 3D print, they do take a long time and they're not bad and they, you know, they're pretty, well they are stable and I found drilling them out really works well because inevitably printed holes are never that accurate and using um, laser cut gear teeth to go on the back of it, the actual flat bit. Let's see what I've got here. We are. I've got a little collection of bits. This was an early one where I'd made the hexagon too small because what I've ended up doing is having the gear on the back of a hexagon and then the hexagon pushes through the hole in the laser cut gear, glue it together with a spot of super glue if you need to, probably a good idea, and then you've got the gears that will turn. Initially I thought that I would use the um, printed, 3D printed things and printed a load. Oh here we are, look, here we are. Here's an early idea, let's zoom out a little bit. Here's an early idea, you can see there's the three pillars for the three gears with the little split tops. But as you can see, there was a problem, the fact the strength really wasn't there. But other than that though, it proved, proof of concept, it would actually work. To cut a very long story short, what I've done, decided to use the things that I found so useful, these stainless steel rivets. They're brilliant, they're stainless steel polished. Because they have tight tolerances, they're at the same diameter all the way up. They don't vary at all. I know that if I drill out a gear, or anything, to 4.1 millimetres, it will spin freely. This I haven't drilled out. You can see it doesn't spin freely even though that was printed to whatever it is. This one has been drilled out to 4.1 millimeters and in fact that's more than 4.1 because it's wobbly. That's probably 4.2. But to cut a long story short it works really well. And then I thought well how can I mount these rivets? How can I mount them? I started thinking about possibly having a base that has these pieces extending at the back to provide support that you can push the rivets into. This stuff is what the, uh, the, the 3D printer will produce if you want to print something that's got an overhang on it and this sort of snaps out of the way, although the time it took this it just really wasn't worth it. Another, another experiment later thinking well perhaps I should use 3mm laser cut acrylic for the base. I tried that and you know drilling the holes out and all the rest and the rivets just pushed in. What it did do, it made me realise that you don't need that much support at the back. In fact 3mm was absolutely fine. All the rivets stayed perfectly perpendicular, really tight in the 3.9mm holes. It worked really well. So moving on from that, I thought okay, let's design, oh, I can never remember which way to turn that, let's design um, the enclosure for the whole thing and add that to the base and it can all be 3D printed 
and the base, this solid bit is, I think he's four millimetres in the end, four millimetres thick. So little threaded screw holes, which I'm very pleased with. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, they just screw in perfectly. Nice long M4 brass cross head, of course, not cross head, flat head. Slotted head, screws, nothing but the best. A little hole for the motor with these two little screws. So that really was coming on, that worked very well. So it's transformed from that, and the latest version is this one. And there's some other benefits, or well, improvements and things. And so I've, I've printed on a little, two little lumps. But that's right, this, this one, jumping around a bit, this is the one before that one. This one, I printed some posts to enable uh, the some sort of label to fit on it, but it doesn't like printing thin posts, and one of them snapped off, so I thought, okay, rule that out, and move on to having um, little angle bits. I, I use this for the outside as well, because obviously, if you just have it flat, horizontal bit sticking out, it needs to produce all those little, the webbing thing to support it, otherwise the plastic just ends up like little bits of spaghetti hanging in space. Having an angle worked really well, so I thought, well, let's try that on the inside, and it has worked really well. If I can zoom in, it's a little bit annoying that everything is white still, you can't really see it. But there you go, there's a little wedge that's actually printed off to the side. It didn't need any webbing underneath it, and it's just printed really well, and it's really solid. So that's the stage we've got to now. I wanted to show you this before I paint it, because the idea is it's a kit. You get all the bits that you need, but... As far as decoration, people can paint it and decorate it how they want. Steam, steampunk enthusiasts are always so creative and so into having brilliant and amazing ideas and costumes and inventions. It's not going to be an issue at all. You know, you could use, I'm going to use spray paint, but you could use humbrol paint. You could use all sorts of stuff, anything that will stick on um, plastic. So I'm going to stop talking now, go away, dismantle this and spray Spray it up, and then we'll see what it looks like. The first one, how exciting. I thought I'd do this bit, silver, the last little bit of silver I've got. So. And because these gears have been properly designed with the teeth in the right place, the shapes of them, the paint doesn't rub off. I was amazed. I shouldn't have been amazed because that's the whole idea of properly designed gear teeth, which is a science and art in itself. But basically, as the teeth come together, I can't really demonstrate my hands but they don't rub against each other. They actually, because of the shape, they just push. This is very exciting. I've designed the surround, the window that's going to go on the front, so I'll import. There we are. So that's the design. Let's go to Tools and Unite Lines. There you go. So what we've got here is the inside hole which is going to be clear. We've got the outside that's going to be cut out, three holes to mount it through with the big brass screws, and I just couldn't resist putting some nice twiddly bits on that are going to be engraved. I have just realised I do not want to cut through that, so I think I'm going to change that to red. Right, so that will be engraved to give the appearance of a change between a metal surface and a clear window. Now my cunning plan to allow people to spray or paint the rest of the this front panel without getting any paint on the window is to leave the protective plastic sheet on either side of the acrylic. See, there are the engraved parts, and there's the engraved line around the middle. Now, that means the, the cunning plan is to 
peel off this protective film where we want the paint to go, but to leave it in the centre over the clear area where we don't. Tell you what, that looks great in your face because the specks of dust on the middle bit but none round the outside. Right, whilst the paint is drying, let's put this together. So we've got a little motor. <laughs> I like that and I especially like the the domes of the rivets. Fantastic. It's interesting. The lovely thing about making this just out of white plastic so that people can decorate it how they want is that people can be as creative as they want. Which is brilliant. I can't wait to see what people make of these kits. I think, um, obviously this is going to be printed on photographic card. Constantly trying to work out ways of keeping costs down. I was thinking, oh, I could engrave this on whatever it is, engraving laminate. Just keep it simple. So difficult. So if that's on card, that can then be glued on there rather than having screws and all the other bits. Keep it simple. Although I may include a lovely red ruby. Hasten to add, it's not a real one, but I include these on most of my machines because it just gives that lovely little, just a lovely little detail with the red, the deep red. These particular ones come from France and they're just gorgeous. It'd be lovely for people to have the opportunity to stick one of these on their machine wherever they'd like, or I may even include a little raised section, I'm not sure. Anyway, watch this space. I reckon. Oh, look at that. Oh. That is just the dog's doodahs. Oh. I tell you what, Governor. That is very fine. That. Oh. I haven't fixed that in place, but the mind. Let's fix this together and see what it looks like. Well, I'm getting very excited about this because finally I can see a mechanism, a steampunk mechanism coming together. You get the idea. Now I'll connect up the battery and see what it looks like. I suddenly realised I'm wasting an opportunity and I could have some gears slightly raised inside the enclosure. I mean I'm printing the rest of it so why not print some extra bits? It make it look really nice, give it a lot of depth. So I started with the logo design that I've used and dropped that into 2D design and fiddled around with it wasn't quite right so I ended up designing it from scratch now the great thing is I discovered that you can export part of the 2d design as a JPEG just black and clear and you can then import that into the 3d designer and it'll be the wrong size but it's easy just to shrink it back down to the original size And oh, it took so long because I wanted it to be raised and I realised I could, didn't want to waste and add extra plastic. So it should be deducted from the existing base. And then went backwards and forwards, deducting or deducting positives from negatives and negatives from positives. Oh, just so difficult getting my head around it. But in the end I got it done and now um, and then lowered it into into place and just raised the base by about a millimetre 
but it was enough. It, perfect profiles. It looks really good. And also, I changed the um, the fixings on the front so they're equidistant. They're 120 degrees all round. And also, was unhappy with the original readout for the gauge. Just wasn't big enough really. So I changed the shape and size of that and created better uh, supports for it with inevitably holes in because I couldn't resist adding some extra brass screws. So two little lovely little brass screws that are going to screw into those holes and fix the gauge face on. If people want to then stick something over their own gauge on over the top then that's fine but at least it'll start with something that works. This is all very exciting. We finally managed to get the, uh, the new design sorted out and it's printing properly. Having had two abortive attempts, I mean, what happened? Let me see if I can leave it on that. So that yeah, look at that. That's, that's really exciting. What was happening was, on two occasions, I started printing everything, all the bits and pieces, and the first one, it printed, started printing this bit properly, but then it just went horribly wrong with the two, two of the other gears. I was trying to print all these bits at the same time, so you know as gears go I have seen better the reason was I'd accidentally moved some of the parts below the level of the bed and it was printing them on the bed and then lifting up and trying to print the other ones in space once I'd sorted that out it was all fine well, there's something worth worth mentioning um, on this this one that I'm printing at the moment I've switched off uh, what do they call it base support you can have no base support where it just prints it straight onto the hot bed which is at 60 degrees centigrade and that's fine i haven't had any problem with that the great thing is once you peel this off that's it you could all i started off with, with the default setting this has got yes maybe written all over it because you can't leave anything anywhere with kids but this was an example of a, a block printed with one of the thick rafts underneath and it's meant to just snap off it sort of does but it is such a pain trying to get this raft off the bit you actually want and that was just taking ages and to use a scalp and all sorts so I've stopped doing that and I tried doing the thin raft or there's an oh there's another alternative version where on earth is that gone well that is just typical isn't it Lovely, finally got this printed and it looks great, especially if we get some shadow on it so you can see the lovely detailed gears and springs and things in the background. These are just paper cut out, a uh, better version of the front bits because originally, I didn't even notice, but as you can see here, the original version didn't have the three mounting holes 120 degrees apart, they were offset. Which is a shame because it means it's very easy to make a mistake. So, new version, another day, and all the rest of it. They're 120 degrees apart. This is a template for the outer just to check that they'll fit and they do. And there's the new dial because I wasn't happy with the original smaller one, and that looks much better. With two more brass screws, just can't help myself. If something's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So what I'm going to do now is take all the paper off and then spray it up. And thankfully, uh, one of my children has found a metallic silver marker because I'm going to once it's sprayed brass, I'm going to see how easy it is to colour these bits in the machinery at the back um, because they're raised by one millimetre, so it should be pretty enjoyable to paint them. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, found it interesting. I also have a website, steamhead.co.uk, where you can find out more about all the machines and the background information, and a YouTube channel where you can see making of videos of all the different things that I've made, just like this one, and an online shop on the website, and an Etsy shop as well. <laughs>